Hello everybody, it's Chris Clark with DiscGolf.Law coming to you today with one of our series of frequently asked questions. Today's question comes to us from Roger and Becky Patterson. Their question has to do with dying discs, copyright law, and how it would apply in situations where you would put a protected or copyrighted image on a disc. A few important things to understand about what I'm about to say in this video. I'm going to focus on copyright law only. There are other forms of intellectual property law, and sometimes they may have an impact or a bearing on dying discs, but I think this is most appropriately geared toward copyright law. I'm also going to be talking about the laws of the United States only. There are different copyright laws in different countries. I don't know what most of those are, and so I'm just going to focus on the U.S. today. Also, this should not be construed as legal advice, as always. We're just going to try to provide you with some basic information. Let's start out with what exactly does copyright law protect? Well, the Copyright Act says it protects works of authorship. Works of authorship under copyright law do include pictorial and graphic works. Most original designs that would go on a disc are eligible for copyright protection. So examples of some things that would not be protected, titles, names, phrases, or slogans. Now let's get to Roger and Becky's specific questions. They asked, can I dye a disc with a copyrighted image for myself or give it as a gift? Could I sell it if I reproduce an image but I don't copy it? In other words, is it okay if I see someone else's image and then I create a rendering of that instead of actually making a copy. How much do I need to alter an image in order to make it my own? And what about college or professional sports teams and their names or logos? As the name implies, copyright protects making copies. Anytime that you are making a copy of someone else's work of authorship, that is copyright infringement. There are certain legal defenses to copyright infringement. The most common one is called fair use. You might have heard of that. There's certain legal elements where if you meet these legal elements in the eye of the court, they do a balancing or a weighing of factors. You may be able able to escape liability for copyright infringement if you can successfully assert a fair use defense. So in order to answer some of these questions, we need to understand when does copyright protection actually attach to this work that you have created. In copyright law, they say that copyright protection exists when your work is affixed in a tangible medium. For some things that's easy, like a work of visual art, if you paint it on a canvas or draw it on a piece of paper, or you create it on a screen. In each of those instances, those are tangible mediums where your work is there and it is more than just an idea in your head. While this may technically be correct, I look at this a little bit differently, I think, than most copyright lawyers. In order to enforce your copyright protection against someone else, the way that you do that is in federal court. Your work must be registered. You must have a copyright registration with the Library of Congress. While there is some truth to the notion that copyright protection legally begins once your work is fixed in a tangible form, there's not really much you can do with that unless and until you have filed for and secured a copyright registration. So when we're thinking about this issue and about Roger and Becky's question, it begs the question of, why or how are there so many discs out there, many for sale, that have been dyed with the logo or protected artwork of some third party? How can that be? A lot of it is tied to the way that damages for copyright infringement are calculated. 
One measure of damages in a copyright infringement action would be the copyright owner's actual damages. What actual financial harm has the copyright owner suffered as a result of this infringement? Another measure of damages is the profits earned by the infringer. If you are someone that has created a dyed disc using someone else's protected work of authorship, a calculation of damages would be what were your profits from that. There's also something in copyright law called statutory damages. Statutory damages are only available to plaintiffs who registered their copyrighted work with the Library of Congress before the infringement took place. You don't have to prove these other things that I talked about. You don't have to prove how much the copyright owner lost or how much the infringer profited, but instead the court has discretion to award a range of dollars. There's a lot of factors that go into how much that exactly would add up to be, but the range can be anywhere from $200 all the way up to $30,000 per infringement. So how does this answer some of the questions that Roger and Becky have? If you think about it, when someone dies a disc and they use someone else's copyrighted image, if that image has not been registered with the Library of Congress, the damages that they are entitled to are going to be very small. Let's look at the examples that Roger and Becky gave. Could I die a disc and keep it for myself? If you've copied someone else's work and put it on a disc that you are going to keep, you haven't profited from that, so there's no damages there. It would be very difficult for the owner of that copyrighted work to prove that they have actual financial damages. What if someone dies a disc that has a popular sports team logo or mascot? In a case like that, it's likely that that sports team has secured a copyright registration for their work. But think about that range that I gave you. It's $200 all the way up to $30,000. Filing and prosecuting lawsuits is expensive. Are you going to incur the unpredictability and the headache and the financial burden of filing a copyright infringement lawsuit when there's a chance your damages might not even equal the attorney's fees that you had to spend in order to bring the lawsuit? So why do we see so many dyed discs out there with copyrighted images on them? I think of the answer as being likely three parts. Number one, frequently dyed discs are created with a copyrighted image and the copyright owner never finds out. And if the copyright owner never finds out, the copyright owner is never gonna be able to enforce their rights against you. Part two is in the unlikely event that the copyright owner discovers someone has made a dyed disc with their copyrighted work on it, they may not care. They may think of this as a benefit if it is a popular character, a popular team, a popular brand, they might consider this as being helpful to them rather than something that they want to take legal action to prevent. And the third thing, as I mentioned before, it's very expensive to enforce your rights through the courts. Frequently, copyright owners might be aware of the infringement. They may prefer the infringement not have taken place, but when they do the financial calculation to enforce their rights, it just doesn't make good business sense to do that. I would say to Roger and Becky and to all the rest of you out there that are dying discs, obviously be mindful full of copyright laws, but also it's perfectly fine to include in your decision-making process an analysis of how likely it is that use of another's work would be discovered and whether there would be any consequence to doing so. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.